life-threatening allergy or anaphylaxis and a shortage of devices used to treat it. Inside Health listener Elizabeth has two children under 10, both with severe allergies. Her daughter is allergic to eggs, her son to sesame and eggs. They both have adrenaline auto-injectors, EpiPen Juniors, to use in emergencies. But when they approached their expiry date and Elizabeth tried to get replacements, she was told week after week that none were available. My anxiety levels are sky high because there are none in stock and no news about when they will be back. The lack of guidance is staggering. The pharmacy was unable to supply alternative brands, Jex and Emirate either, and to have nothing when you've had children at risk of anaphylaxis is terrible. And I have had conflicting advice about whether we could carry on using the Repipens even though they're out of date. All very worrying. Since contacting Inside Health, Elizabeth has been told that, because her children are almost 25 kilos in weight, she can give them an adult dose, and last week was given two adult EpiPens. She needs more for school and home, but it's a start. Margaret McCartney is in our Glasgow studio. Margaret, what's the latest on supplies? Well, we've been told in the last few days that in Scotland, and the similar picture, of course, extends across the rest of the UK, that supplies are a bit dodgy and are expected to remain erratic and difficult until the end of this year. Now, in Elizabeth's case, she had problems getting hold of the junior pens. Is this a problem for adults as well? Well, it was a problem for adults, but the adult supply now seems to be a bit more stable, but it remains the junior, the EpiPen junior one that seems to be much more difficult to get hold of. Elizabeth alluded to a Jex and Amorade, which, of course, are the two uh, other brands. Brands. Have there been problems with them as well? Not as far as I know, but these are much smaller suppliers, so there simply isn't as much of these type of devices in circulation, which means you're much less likely to get one of these. And as far as I know, their factory supply hasn't been up to at least at a level that has met the demand that the EpiPen fall-off could meet. What about this question about guidance in terms of, of has anybody produced definitive guidance on whether it's OK, for instance, to, to use your EpiPen past its expiry date? And if so, by how far? Yes, yeah, so there are specific batches that um, we have been advised can be used for a few months beyond their expiry date and you can look at those batch numbers on the medicines and healthcare regulatory authority website there's a long list of them and you can look at the small print in your epipen and try and work out if it's one of the batch or not that belongs to that and the general advice is that um, you, the, these batches are safe enough to use in this and don't get rid of your old epipen until you've got a new one and of course the, if it says it expires let's say in November 2018 that means the end of November 2018 not the beginning of it. What about using an adult pen in a child? The current advice is that a child over the, the 25 kilograms could use an adult one if a child one is not available, which seems fair enough. But apart from that, I'm not aware of any guidance that says what we should be using if we can't get hold of a junior one. But to be fair, I haven't come across a situation where we have not been able to find a junior one, maybe even just one um, to give to a parent or family. Do we have any idea when normal supply is likely to resume? Well, not really. I mean, we've been told to expect disruption until the end of this year. And I suppose it's important to point out that we do get supply disruptions across all manner of medicines. This is unfortunately pretty commonplace. Whenever I'm on call, I always feel as though I spent half my time trying to find medications that are not in stock at one pharmacy and trying to get hold of them at another. So we have this, I suppose, this supply problem really across the board and there are many medicines, and I'm sure many doctors and patients will describe very similar problems, trying to get something that's a fairly commonplace normal medication suddenly goes out of stock and we can't get a hold of it anymore. Do we know what's gone wrong? Was there a manufacturing issue? I mean, obviously the manufacturer have got a vested interest in selling as many of these EpiPens as they can. Well, yes. Some of the problems seem to be that stock that's intended for the UK market doesn't always end up in the UK market. Some people think this is because of the weak pound against a stronger euro or dollar. Um, sometimes supply problems originate with different medicines when one factory, for example, stops producing or stops producing as many. Um, and there's also very complex kind of quota systems that are operated and organised as well. The problem is that EpiPen has such a dominant share of the market that if something goes wrong with its supply, it creates quite widespread disruption. There are not the same number of different companies making the product that can easily take over that gap in the market. Thank you, Margaret. Well, the shortages come at a time of heightened anxiety around anaphylaxis following the death of 15-year-old Natasha Ednan Laparouse. Natasha died following an allergic reaction to sesame seeds despite being given two EpiPen injections. At the inquest into her death earlier this month, the coroner, Dr Sean Cummings, concluded that EpiPens are not fit for purpose. 
because they don't contain enough adrenaline or have a long enough needle to deliver it. He's written to the manufacturer Pfizer and the Medicine and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency calling for action. Dr Robert Boyle is consultant paediatric allergist at St Mary's Hospital in London and a researcher in children's allergies at Imperial College. Robert, that's a damning conclusion from the coroner. Well, I was quite pleased to see the coroner raise these issues. I mean, a lot of your patients must depend on these products or similar. Yeah, they do. They do. And, uh, you know, it's a very anxiety inducing situation because food allergies can kill a, a young person within minutes. And when a reaction happens and the uh, how severe it is, is uh, are, are unpredictable. So at some level, people with food allergy need to be prepared for a really catastrophic event at any moment in their lives. And that's obviously very difficult to balance with having a normal, healthy life, doing the sort of social and dietary activities that you'd want to do. So no, I was pleased to hear the coroner raise those issues. Are they familiar issues to you? I mean, do you worry about the devices that people are using? I think there's widespread concern amongst the allergy community that these devices are not as good as they could be. We're fairly sure that adrenaline is the right drug to treat an allergic reaction and that the dose that's being administered through these devices is a safe dose. But there are a number of issues with the devices, you know, starting with those that the coroner raised. The length of needle, for a skinny person, they need a short needle. For an overweight person, they need a longer needle. And each device just produces one needle length for the dose. So there's an issue that the needle length is not always right for the right person. I mean, it seems incredible to me. The EpiPen's hardly a new device. It's a market leader. It's mm. been around for a long time. You would have thought that, that you know, this is a big market, that they've got this device absolutely perfected by now. Mm. Would you not? Well, it's remarkable when you look at the device and its history, how little innovation there's been with the adrenaline auto-injectors in general. EpiPen we've, we've had since the 1970s. And for some time, we've been aware that it's difficult to use in an emergency. It's not a sort of size and shape that every person wants to carry. The doses do not encompass the usual dose for treating anaphylaxis in a young adult or teenager. And then there's the issue around the needle length, which has been highlighted by the coroner and also by the MHRA, the regulatory agency in the UK. But why hasn't there been much innovation in, in this area? I mean, it's, I get the feeling that you'd like to see, you and your colleagues would like to see more innovation in this area. Is, is that correct? Of course. And I think the patients would too and their parents. They, people want better devices that are fit for purpose. I think at one level, the industry may not need to innovate too fast because they are selling a lot of devices. This is the best we've got. It's almost certainly better than nothing. So we're sort of reliant on the supply of adrenaline auto-injectors without being able to create enough competitive pressure for the companies to innovate. Talking of competition, there are two other brands which we've, we've mentioned. Is there any evidence medically that, that they're better than, than EpiPen in any way? Have they addressed any of the issues of the the shortcomings of the EpiPen? Well, I think it's good to see some changes there. The MRA device has the correct dose available for an adult or adolescent, and it has a slightly longer needle length. And those are two issues which have been brought up time and again around the EpiPen. So there are three devices available. They've all got their strengths and weaknesses. None of them are perfect, but I think we're, it's, it's a positive thing that there's some degree of competition there. Familiarity must be very important here. I mean, I'm thinking of the supply issues. If people were to switch to one of the others, uh, you, you need to know how to use it, don't you? Uh, you don't want to get it out for the first time to use yeah. it in anger. Yeah, and that's the disadvantage of having some competitive activity there. Switching from one device to another, and I think an important message for patients in the current situation where you may be switched from one device to another because of the supply shortages is that if you're switched to a new device, you need to make sure that someone shows you how to use that new device. What about this thing about using um, adult pens in, in children? What's your position on that? Can you give someone too much adrenaline? Uh, you can. You can give someone too much adrenaline. In, in general, the doses that are used in the adrenaline auto-injectors have a good safety window. In some countries, they will use an adult pen for a 20 kilogram child and above. Our policy in this country is to use a, a 300 microgram, an adult dose of an adrenaline auto-injector for a 25 kilogram person or heavier. So there's probably some flexibility there around the 20 to 25 kilogram mark, but I don't think you'd want to give the adult EpiPen to very young children because there's a real possibility of causing some harm in a, in a, in a, in a young infant, for example. What about the impact of these devices over the years since they've been introduced? Are we seeing fewer people die from anaphylaxis? 
Well, there's certainly been a huge increase in the number of these devices prescribed and sold, both in the UK and overseas in the last 20, 25 years. Disappointingly, we haven't seen a big inroad into the number of fatalities. So the, the, there, is a, there is a question there of how effective the devices are overall. But they're the best we can get. You know, they're the right drug uh, for treating anaphylaxis. We, we, we know it works, we see it works under our eyes in hospital and in clinical studies. There's the right drug and it's a safe dose. It may not always prevent the tragic outcomes such as the one, one you described earlier, but I think it's the best we can get. We do need a, a, a safe supply uh, and a reliable supply of adrenaline auto-injectors and all the charities, uh, professional groups and regulatory agencies in the UK are working hard to try and ensure we've got a supply in this country which people can rely on. Dr Robert Boyle, thank you very much.